this town of make-believe, the truth behind the scenes is also filled with drama. This is a realistic documentary of how one young actor struggles with life. The glamorous town itself doesn't breed this strange new type of actor. He is probably the product of a tense world in an age of power. Against this Hollywood backdrop of fantasy, yesterday's teenager, now growing up, Faces tomorrow, still searching for kicks, but deeply searching for meanings. At the hangout for coffee sessions, their world revolves around the stage. And with people whose work is pretending, realism is confusing. It is easy for the very young to become frustrated. Our story deals with the motivation of a young star obsessed with death. Perhaps it is God's way. But herein, real actors and actresses in this lost and lonely world give an honest portrayal, not on the great sound stages, but on actual location, telling a sympathetic story of a sensitive youth. He will be known as John Dennis. I've known Johnny since he first hit pictures. We were friends, but I never really understood him. Nobody can understand him. What about Tanya, his dramatic coach? I have told you before, Doctor. Johnny has every reason to be happy. He's bound to be a star with his first picture. He has money. Could be a fine artist, too. The latest thing he did was a portrait of himself. Half alive and half dead. Why, Doctor? Now, why does he bring death into his paintings? I just don't understand him anymore. Tanya, there is nothing I can do. I can't possibly help this boy unless you bring him to me. I know. I'll try again. Johnny Big Shot. What, are you trying to make the headlines? Take a lead, hard man. I'll teach you how to drive. Out of the way!
that, all that energy being wasted. Forget it, wise guy. No, no, honey. I got too good a memory. Come on, pick lesson out. what kind of parts can I do? So I ask him what kind of parts does he have? So he ends up by telling me I gotta make up my mind. What's there to make up? All I want to do is act. I'm not particular, you know what I mean? A day here, a day there, and I can pay the rent. I think he. So who needs swimming pools, huh? If I want to swim, I'll go to Santa Monica. One of these days, the worm is gonna turn. And when it does, that, that, that strip casting director is gonna be on the other side of the fence, you know what I mean? Walt. Do you ever feel you might be using the wrong approach? When are you going to learn you don't get parts by breaking down the door? If I had your figure, doll, somebody would open the doors for me. Hey, look at her, Pig. If you were stacked like that, you could walk in anywhere. Have you ever run out of dialogue? Uh-uh. Not when I'm talking to a dish like you. Hey, I'll buy a cup of coffee. With what? I got four bits. Money. Yeah, well, I didn't notice your T-Bird parked out back. I walked for my hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've heard. So how's ballet's gift to the motion pictures, huh? Cut it out, Walt. Gosh. You know something? Someday somebody's gonna slap you right in that pretty nose of yours and make a mess of it. So I'll do monster pictures. There's more money in it, you know what I mean? Why don't you come out from behind some of that paint, huh? You know, uh, some things are cheap in this town. Especially phonies. Well, who's a phony? Listen, doll, one of these days I'm gonna be big. Big! So you better be nice to me, because somebody's gonna have to take care of you in your old age. Excuse me, buddy, the smog's getting worse. Have a nice trip. Mind if I sit down? I'm Pinky. Not at all. I'm Darlene. This is Buddy. How do you do? Sit down, Buddy. The breeze isn't as strong over here. Still too close. You kids talk. I left my new records over on the counter. Hi, doll. You just got in from New York. You, uh, got a name? My name is Darlene. Welcome to the morgue. I'm Walt. The more you see of them, honey, the less you'll want to see. When are we gonna get that coffee you so rashly ordered? Big twinkle toes were there. Cut it out, Walt. Are you an actor? Oh, that was the wrong question, honey. Well, is he? Want me to quote something? Excuse me, Pig. There's a lovely creature of the opposite gender in need of my help. Resign yourself, honey. It's practically painless. Never fear. Daddy's here. How long have you been in town? Since the beginning of the week. I took a room on Hayward, nothing much, just to get by for the first month. I plan to be working right away. I'll make it. Everybody says I will. I did a lot of good TV parts back east. Our town is crawling with entertainers who came out from back east. But I can act. I understand out here everybody just walks to their parts. Nobody has any fire. Well, maybe we all better go to New York and get a little of this fire. You know, TV pays the rent. I figured that would be a good way to get into pictures. I got news for you, honey. Don't count on anything. Nobody watches TV out here. They spend their days at the beach and their nights in the bars.
<laughs> you got an agent? Uh -huh, I signed with one this afternoon. Couldn't promise anything. Things are kind of rough right now. You got an agent? Yeah, yeah. He takes 10% of my debts on speculation. <laughs> my agent's name is Harriet Holly. Ever heard of her? Harriet Holly? Is she any good? <laughs> She'd handle anybody. She just loves people. You think I shouldn't have signed with her? Well, if she gets your work, why worry? Honey, she works with drama schools. She takes a cut of the tuition. She told me to have some new pictures taken. You know, some sexy shots. Yeah, yeah, well, that's one assignment you could fill, all right. You're not very encouraging. Nobody's very encouraging around here. We like being miserable. Excuse me, I have a dance lesson. Hey, you still here. taking ballet? Ever since I was 10. When are you gonna learn the steps? You're a very funny man, Walt. <laughs> here, Pinky, watch my records, will you? Why don't you lay off him, Walt? Oh, he's a very nice boy. Remind me to ignore him. If you ask me, he seems a little odd. Back in New York, I never knew any dancers, just actors. We kind of stayed together. And <laughs> while well, out here we mingle, it makes for better maladjustment. Oh. Whoops. Have you seen Johnny? He hasn't been around all day, isn't he out of town? No. He's back. Thank you. I've often wondered why she and Johnny should be such good friends. He can certainly do better than that. Well, he's playing it cool. The oddball bit. Makes people talk, you know what I mean? I don't go for that. He's not the type. He hates publicity. Who are we talking about? Uh, a guy named Johnny Dennis. Just got his big break. A leading role in a picture after doing bits for years. Oh, really? And who is she? His dramatic coach. Her name is Tanya. Yeah, she tucks him in at night. What's the matter, your boy wonder ignoring you? Huh? I don't think that's any of your business, Walt. Maybe not. But, uh, Johnny's a funny guy. He doesn't keep friends very long. No. I've known Johnny three years. Three years? Well, I guess your term's just about up then. I gotta give you credit, though. Three years is a long time. But, uh, now that Johnny's made the grade... What are you driving at, Walt? We're just talking about Johnny. Mm -mm. You were talking about Johnny. Hey, uh... Did he really stand you up again? Huh? You fascinate me sometime, Walt. Right now you're talking like the reporter of one of those cheap magazines. I could fill several issues, you know what I mean? I'm sure you could. However, put that little evil mind of yours at ease. Johnny and I are not... How would you put it? That way about each other? I'm just a teacher. Yeah. One of the prettiest I've seen. Well, thank you. Coming from you, it's completely out of character, so I'll take it as a compliment. Nevertheless, I'm still a teacher. I thought all teachers were old maids and uh, wore their hair piled up on top of their heads, huh? You've been reading comic books, Walt. My father was a teacher at the age of 23, in one of the most important schools in Europe. My only interest in Johnny is his career. Is it? Yes. Disappointed? Doesn't bother me in the least. Johnny won't be taking any of your classes now. That's up to Johnny, of course. But a good actor never stops studying. Maybe you could use another guy, huh? For what? To, uh, teach? I'm always open to suggestion. Do you know someone with talent? Yeah. Who? Me. 
You? Fortunately, Walt, I'm in a position to choose my students. What's the matter? Ain't I good enough for you? I'm as good an actor as Johnny Dennis. All right. So he got his break. Well, if I'd have gotten that break instead of him, I'd be driving the fancy sports car right now, and he'd be sitting around here like the rest of us bumming coffee. Walt, I am not in the sports car business. Okay. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. I'll make the grade, and I'll make it without one of Tanya's diplomas. Walt, you need something I couldn't possibly give you. Talent. didn't call me. No, I didn't call you. I was hoping you'd want to talk to me. Why? Johnny, since when have you and I needed a reason to be together? I worry when I don't hear from you. Don't. I could have left town. Johnny, I... I don't understand you, Johnny. Who does? Two coffees. Black. If you're interested, I've been in the library. For oh, two days? I got lost. <laughs> it's a big place. It's a good place to be lost. Not for long. Well, then why did you go there? I had to look up something. Is that all you did? Yeah. If you want to tell me, you'll tell me. I read a book. I couldn't take it out. I didn't have a library card, so I just stayed and read it right there. It was all about the human mind. The book called it a dark continent of motive and desire. It's about guys like me. Did you ever know that some people go around wishing they were dead? Some of them love to attend funerals. And some of them just think about it. Did you find out why they do such things? I'm not sure. I'm sick of living, I guess. But Johnny, you are not sick of living. No. Well, then why do you read such a book? Because it was in the library. Are you mad at me? Oh, no, no. Can I get you something? A sandwich? Hi, Johnny. What do you know? I'll see you around. Hi. Uh, how come you're sitting back here all alone, huh? We were alone, and we'd hope to keep it that way. Well, everybody else is up in front. I notice. That's why we're back here. Well, it's uh, not much of a star's dressing room, is it? How would you know? Temporarily, I'll overlook that crack. What do you mind, Tanya and I are talking? Oh. Something private? Kind of an interview in the star's dressing room? What's bothering you, Walt? Uh, nothing. Nothing's bothering me. Just that uh, you kind of been ignoring the old gang lately, huh? I've been busy at the studio. Does that bother you? Oh, not particularly. Because I plan on being there very soon myself, you know what I mean? But when I get there, I won't go around snubbing my friends. Nobody's snubbing you, Walt. No? You know, somehow I get the feeling that you've got a chip on your shoulder. Yeah? Well, if you have, forget it. I don't get mad very easily. What is this, part of the new Johnny? You better beat it, Walt. Please, Johnny, ignore him. That's right. You're a big star now. You can't be bothered, huh? You just take the madam's advice, see, and, uh... Come on, let's leave. Walt's at it again. Do they do this often? No! <laughs> 
Lie down, darling. I'll get some marks for your head. Search yourself. I'm sorry, Walt is so crude. He's terribly jealous of you, you know. Here, put this under your head. You shouldn't have hit him, really. No, I shouldn't have hit him. I remember he asked for it. Well, he's mean. That's all. He's mean and frustrated. Who isn't? Isn't what? Frustrated. Anya, for Pete's sake, you want me to get over this headache? Go away and leave me alone. Oh, if a bad temper is a requisite, you're bound to be a star. Sometimes I think a good spanking would be the best thing for you. Really getting into a fight. I should lock you up in my closet. Take the key with me, then I know where you were. Are you listening to me? Now, what if you were making a movie right now? What kind of a performance do you think you'd give in this condition? You want to know something? I don't really care. Uh. Right now, you look like a female dragon. As a matter of fact, you sound like one, too. You're much prettier as a woman. How did your mother ever put up with you? She did. Oh. What's the matter? I don't know. Pain shot through my whole arm. Well, you probably have some bed bruises. Let me see. Sit down. You can't expect to fight without getting banged up a little. Oh, quiet. Now, you tell me if anything hurts. Ouch. Sorry, but it serves you right. Star can't afford to be hurt, you know. That sounds like Walt. Walt is jealous of you. Can you understand that? Jealous. So I make a picture. What's that got to do with anything? I feel more alone now than I ever have in my life. Johnny, I don't understand you. What's with you? Every time we start talking, you say, I don't understand you, Johnny. What's there to understand? Am I so complicated? Are you different? From what? 
I'm the Johnny I thought I knew. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please sit down. Tomorrow night is your premiere. I know. Aren't you thrilled? I'm not going. What? I said I'm not going. Why do I have to repeat everything? Well, they expect you there. I suppose so. Well, then you've got to go. Why do I have to go? Who says so? What's so special about a premiere? Everybody stares at you. They yell a lot, that's about all. What's so special about a premiere? Johnny, this is your first picture. Everyone says you're good in it. So I'm good. It will make you a star. Oh, you don't know how lucky you are. What's luck got to do with it? Listen, I ride in this town for almost three years, and so now I make a picture. That's luck? I'm not any better now than I was then. Listen, what's so special about me now? Can you tell me? Mm -hmm. Well? There's nothing special about you, Tony. You're just a very ordinary guy. Or would you rather I tell you the things you want to hear? Shut up, you hear? Shut up! Maybe I'm going on a trip. Location? No, not on location. I wasn't talking about making another movie. You don't understand anything. John. People don't live forever. I might be dead tomorrow. Why do you read things that depress you? Some people live to be a hundred. I don't want to live to be a hundred. Understand? Johnny, this is not up to you to decide. Don't worry. I gotta go. Johnny! Forget about the book. You've got everything to live for. It's easy enough for you to say. Did you ever try it? I forget that you nearly starved to death for five years. Thanks for the cold towel. Guess I should use more of them. Bye, baby. I'm watching the premiere. You like movies? I can take them or leave them. This one has a new actor. <sighs> yeah, I know. They say he's tremendous. Uh, what's his name? Um, Johnny Dennis. What? Johnny Dennis. Oh, that's not it. It's uh, Jerry or Ronnie or something like that. Take my word for it. It's Johnny Dennis. Okay, okay. I read a lot about him in the magazines. They say he's kind of strange. Who says? The magazine. It seems he's not very cooperative. Of course, he's probably entirely different than they say. Maybe not. You can't tell until you really know someone. Don't I know you? I'm sure I've seen your face before. I wanted to apologize for yesterday. I didn't mean to scare you. Honest. Well, you did. I was furious. You almost ran over me. But later on, I forgave you. You looked so serious with that book in the library. I just couldn't be angry. I guess I act kind of odd sometimes. You're not a criminal, are you? No, but I'll give it my consideration. I've 
seen your picture before. I know I have. Turn your face a little bit. You're him. Oh. Him, him. Johnny Dennis. That picture. Don't tell me you're not, because I'm never wrong. Okay, you're never wrong. That's your first picture, and you didn't go. I got scared. What? I got scared. Do you mind? <laughs> don't laugh. I'm sorry. It's just so funny, all those people over there waiting to see you, and you're not even going to be there. I just don't like crowds. You're a movie star. I only made one picture. I better go. Wait, don't you want my autograph? What for? Well, someday I might be famous. Okay, never mind. Why do you have to go in such a hurry? Why? I go every Thursday night. What for? A swim. I like to swim. Do you mind? Well, don't be hard to get along with now. I'm not going to bite you. I'm not the one who's afraid. Yeah, that's right. Is everybody in movies as crazy as you are? Well, I don't know. I haven't been in movies long enough to find out. My car's right over there. You mind if I drop you off? It's only a few blocks. No charge. Delivery guarantee. Why don't you go over to the premiere where you belong? It's more fun over here. Come on, I'll have you there in one minute flat. Oh, you probably don't even know where it is. Well, all right. Let's go. Swell. No, I really shouldn't be doing this. Why not? Daddy wouldn't like it. You're not afraid, remember? <laughs> <laughs> You're impossible. Well, uh, it's the secret of my split personality. <laughs> I'd hate to meet the other guy. Oh, he's very well adjusted. Let's go. Standing still. Will I be safe? As safe as you'd be in your own bedroom. It sure is pretty. It's paid for. The wine's back there. Can't hear you. should have seen your face when... Hey, where are you going? Looking for a rock. Well, see if you can find a soft one. I'd like to bash your head in. You tricked me. Well, I'm sorry there was no left-hand turn. You were supposed to take me to the Y. Is this the Y? Here, give me that. Right now, you look like a tiger ready for the kill. There's nothing funny about being kidnapped. I figured you could use the fresh air. I had a date at the Y to go swimming. You want to go swimming? We'll go swimming. My date was with my girlfriend. I'm sorry. It was just one of those things that jerks like me are always pulling. You know, like this bus driver I read about the other day. He had the same bus route for 20 years. And one day he got to the end of the line and just kept on going. Didn't you ever want to do that? What? Drive a bus? No. Keep on going.
You're just about the weirdest character I've ever met. Now what are you doing? I'm looking for my swimming trunks. Don't bother. Here, hold these. I found them. Let's go. Hey, where's your bathing suit? I have it on. Please, won't you take me back? <laughs> it's silly. What do you want to go to the Y for? We've got the whole lake to ourselves. Does your keeper know you're out? Ah, I climbed over the wall. Come on. I'll be in the men's dressing room. The only thing I can figure out is you must be a mental case. Thanks. I'm not trying to be nice. I am. Hey, you started to undress yet? No. Well? Okay. You're a nice kid. Do you have a job? Mm-hmm. I work at the drugstore. Across the street from the theater. I don't even know your name. I know yours. You're Johnny Dennis, the famous movie star. Now, oh, what are you trying to do? Spoil my whole evening? Well, are you going to tell me your name, or do I have to make one up? Hey! Talk to yourself or go swimming. You want to play, huh? Come on, slow folk. Wasn't that better than the one? It sure was. You mean you don't have a swimming pool in the 20 room house? No, that's for poor people. I live alone. <laughs> Somebody better have a talk with you. They have. I don't listen. You live alone? No, with my dad. He hasn't been too well. What kind of work does he do? Aircraft. He's a welder. Nice job. Not when you have to work all night. Yeah, it must get lonely for you. I have my job at the drugstore and my friends. You're lucky. You like them. Kind of screwball. Meaning I'm a screwball? As men as a compliment. Let's swim. Everybody calls you that. So? So I'll call you Preach. Being an individualist, huh? Why not? Gee, you're pretty. Johnny, I think we'd better go home.
Hey, Fig, dig this. Although it is his first picture, the general opinion in theatrical circles is that his performance will warrant an Academy Award nomination come spring. Academy Award. What? Hey, Fig, you want to go for a ride? Huh? Give me some money, huh? Two beers, huh? Last stop, end of the line. But conductor, I have a transfer. I'm sorry, sir. All transfers have been canceled for the night. Then I'll just have to use my railroad pass. I'm sorry, but passes are no good west of La Brea. You mean I'm stranded? Until the next bus comes along. I don't mind missing one bus. Okay. You can come in for a little while. Space. You got tired of it. Cut yourself down and fly away. I thought of that. Where was your home, John? Pennsylvania. Little town you never heard of. I'd like to live in a small town. I was born in New Orleans. Dad brought me here after Mother died. Big towns can be lonely. Little towns can be lonely, too. I guess it depends on the people. I guess. No, I knew a professor back home. Funny old fellow. He built himself a chicken house for a hobby. He was retired. Then he asked me to kind of help him out the evenings. Got kind of tough for him. So I used the money to buy a bicycle. I was about 12 years old then. Every night after we got through feeding the chickens, we used to sit around and talk. He talked about everything under the sun. Made me kind of happy just to listen to him. And one day, his wife came around to our house. She told me she had some bad news for me, but I told her I knew. He had died. I cried for an hour. I still miss him. I guess we all have somebody when we're young. I'd like to take you back to Pennsylvania with you, Preach. It's green. And it's got hills and woods and cricks that make a lot of noise. I've seen pictures. That's not the same. Funny how you forget. Ever so often I find myself walking along the street and I look up and I see a tree. You ever really look at a tree? You ever notice the leaves? They make a funny little laughing sound, especially in the wind. You can almost feel it. Yeah, you know. You know how it feels. Yes, I know how it feels to be lonely. Want a Coke? Yeah. Johnny? Huh? You don't know it, but you're just about as homesick as anybody I've ever met. Why don't you go back home? Forget all this movie stuff. I gotta stay here. Why? Gotta make hay while the sun shines. And you're miserable? Oh, after a few years, I'll get used to it. I never get used to it. Everybody's so busy going places. They're all gonna be movie stars. Everybody can't be a movie star, even I know that. Oh, some of them. Give up and settle for being waitresses or bellhops. Why don't they go home? They can't. 
They only bought a one-way ticket. Doesn't make sense. Pride never does. But what have they got to be so proud of? Trying, I guess. Trying to be something big. Here. Thanks. Seems to me it'd be better to stay in a small town and raise chickens for a hobby. Do you think you'll ever do that? I don't think I can squeeze it in. I'd rather make another movie. You don't make sense either. You don't like Hollywood, yet you don't want to leave it. I'm kind of like Teddy here. His name is Toby. I've had him since I was a baby. Then he's as old as you are. So? So someday he's going to get wounded and all the sun is going to fall out. I won't let it happen. Oh, but it will. It happens to the best of teddy bears. When all the sawdust is gone, there'll be nothing left but a limp old rag. Silly. Just a limp old rag. Nobody will remember you. Nobody but preach. That's the way Coke affects you. Remind me not to give you any more. You can give it to Toby. It's going to be a limp old rag. He won't need it. Will you, Toby? Toby says to shut up and drink your Coke. Toby's a slob. Well, he can see through you, and so can I. You're starting to feel sorry for yourself. That's your trouble. So I feel sorry for myself. We're not all great big martyrs that go around carrying the world on our shoulders. Who wants to? I'd rather be happy with someone I really liked. So would I. Well, then why don't you find someone, then? Instead of going around with that pained expression on your face. What am I supposed to do? Run an ad in the newspaper? I suppose you expect to stumble over her or have her come up and ask for an autograph. I noticed you didn't. When I want it, I'll ask for it. How long is that going to take? You'll be too busy feeling sorry for yourself to even notice. Hello, General. What are you doing home so early? Felt a little tired and sick. Uh, take this. Foreman told me to take the rest of the night off. You better sit down. Who's your friend? Oh, this is Johnny. Johnny, this is my father. How do you do, Mr. Pitcher? Johnny? I don't know what came over me. Everything got dark and I couldn't see. I'll get your medicine. She's a sweet girl. I'm mighty proud of her. You have a right to be. When the mother dies, it isn't easy. The general kind of raised herself. She's done a good job, too, hasn't she? Preaches tops. Preach? A uh, nickname I gave her. Preach? It's cute. You worked out at the drugstore, too? No, sir. Just friends? Just friends. Well, you look like a good boy. Nice, clean cut. I'm glad to know you. The general needs company. Here, let me help you, sir. Thank you, son. Why do you call her the general? That's a little joke between us. The fact is, she bosses me around. I don't look after her, she looks after me. It must be nice. Not many fathers have a daughter like mine. Well, what have you two been talking about? You, of course. I suppose I've got to take this. This is the most awful tasting stuff. Stop complaining and drink it. You didn't take it this afternoon, did you? You've got spies. She's got eyes in the back of her head. I surrender. You think he didn't want to get well? Why should he with a nurse like you? He won't have me for long if he doesn't do as I say. Now, sir, go to bed. Right now? Right now. I'd hate to be in your regiment. I'd be on KP all the time. <laughs> well, <laughs> good night, son. It's nice to have met you. Good night, Mr. Pitcher. He tells me he calls you preach. Go to bed. I'm going. <laughs> I'll be in to check on you. I know you will, General. Yeah, he's playing hooky. He does it every so often. I think he likes you. I haven't made up my mind yet. 
Why did you put up with me tonight? I don't know, John. You could have told me to mind my own business. You know that. Well, say something. Take a job as a car hop. Just temporarily, of course. A car hop? Well, what's wrong with that? Lots of stars got discovered in drive-ins. I don't mean to get personal, honey, but I think... But nothing. I know what you're thinking, Pinky. But it's just until I get established to make the right contacts. Have it your own way. A steady job will pay the premiums, Pinky. Premiums on what? On work insurance. Here, look, I know an easier way. Why don't you find yourself... I'm not interested in getting married. I came out here for a career, and I'm going to have one. Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing. Okay. But there's no rule against having fun while you're waiting, is there? Oh, go dance with Buddy. So you got problems. So is everybody. Hon, you're not going about this in the right way. I get what I want out of this town, and I don't have to settle for room and board. Where are you going? Out back while fixing his car. Don't tell me you were more. Just friends. That's the most satisfactory arrangement a girl can have. Lots of friends. I thought you hated his insides. He's a little mixed up. Boy, if he talked to me the way he talks to you, I'd slap his face. I've done that. I don't know, there's something about him. He's a phony, but he's a good looking phony. You can't expect everything in a man. What does the studio executive have to say this evening? Well, I can't start my next picture until I find the right blonde. Now, she has to be uh, so tall and have a good suntan. I spend two hours in the sun every day. With nothing on but a sun lamp. It's better than vitamins. Well, no, I haven't found the right blonde. What are you doing? Oh, you wouldn't understand even if I drew your pictures. Well, why don't you get a car that works? Cadillacs don't break down. You can afford Cadillacs. Well, I know a lot of people who drive cabs. Yeah? I'll bet your agent isn't one of them. Start it, Peg. Okay, cut it. You bleach your hair again? I'm a natural blonde. Oh, come on, get off it. Everybody knows you're a natural brunette. Start the motor, Peg. Okay, cut it. Get lost, will you? I'm busy. Busy hiding from Johnny Dennis. I don't hide from nobody, least of all Johnny Dennis. And if he thinks he can slug me and get away with it, he's off his lid. Because nobody pushes this little boy around. See, if there's any pushing to be done, I'll do it. So I noticed the other day. What? It's the truth, isn't it? You picked a fight and Johnny not just silly. Shut up. Why should I? It's the truth. Okay, stick around. Johnny will be here. Pig and I are waiting for him. You got yourself a ringside seat. What makes you think he'll be here today? He always meets Tanya here, doesn't he? Tanya's not here. No? Look over there. We'll see how good your ex is in the fresh air. You're scared of him, Walt. You're just talking as usual. Stick around. You heard him and I'll call the police. Side you on, doll. He's a nice guy, that's all. Just a nice guy. Why'd they ever get mixed up with a bum like you? That's right. That's right. Sell tickets. Make a big production out of it. <sighs> well, if he runs, it'll be easier. 
big, brave movie star. Hey, you know, we might even get a newspaper plug out of it. Relax, will you, pig? Hey, pig, lean under the dash and see if you can feel this wire, will you? Hi, Johnny. I didn't figure you'd be talking to me. Well, what's one sort of jaw between friends, huh? Hey, that was a real cool switch you pulled the other night, not going to your own premiere. Real cool. What, do you got a press agent or something? Walt. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna be a big man, Johnny. A couple more oddball stunts like that and put you right up on top of the heap, you know what I mean? I might not be around to see it, I might not live that long. You know, one of these days, somebody's gonna stick a pin in you and let all that hot air out. Be careful, Johnny. Stay out of this. Careful, Johnny. Johnny. I told you to stay out of this. Now get back inside. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. For a minute there, I forgot who you were. Tell me, Walt. You write home every week. You give a little list of the pictures you're in. Which one of them are you supposed to be doing now? You got a house in the hills? I suppose that piece of junk over there is really a continental. And, and say... How about your kid sister? Does she really sell pictures of you back home? You're beginning to bug me, Johnny. Like I say, Walt, one of these days, somebody's going to stick a pin in you and you're going to melt down into nothing but a stain. A stain on the sidewalk. No footprints in concrete for you, Walt. Just a stain. You know what I mean? Johnny, Johnny. Go away. Leave me alone. Johnny, you're bleeding. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Johnny, you're hurt. I know I'm hurt. Listen. Listen to me, Tony. I'm listening, Johnny. You've got to do something for me. Anything, Johnny. What do you want? Here, take this. What is it? Never mind. You see the address? Yes. Can it wait? Just deliver the letter. Yes. Where are you going? No. Johnny, you're hurt. Deliver the letter. Yes. Is it that important? Just see that Helen Preacher gets it. Nobody else. Understand? Is she someone you know? Yeah. From Pennsylvania? Yeah, from Pennsylvania. Bye, Tanya. Johnny, I'm afraid. Afraid of what? Oh, for a second, you... You look like that horrible painting. Pink. 
Preacher. Oh, I am Tanya Pano. How do you do? Um, a mutual friend asked me to deliver something to you. From the drugstore? The drugstore? Where I work. Oh, no, no. Oh, Johnny Dennis. Oh, you know Johnny. Won't you come in? Johnny write me a letter. Perhaps he had something to say that, uh, well, that he forgot to tell you the last time he saw you. I was only with him once. Didn't you know him in Pennsylvania? No. The farthest east I've been is Louisiana. Oh, I see. I, I really should go. I have an acting class this evening. Johnny was one of my favorite students, you know. You taught him to act? No, that was something he was born with. I'm afraid there was very little I was able to give Johnny. From what I gathered, he didn't need very much. Well, Johnny was always a very self-sufficient person. I'm very glad to have met you, Miss Preacher. You are very different from most of Johnny's friends. Thank you. You better read your letter. And don't bother, I let myself out. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss. Just call me Tanya. Everybody does. Goodbye, Tanya. Last night, when I came home, I, I couldn't sleep. I kept staring at the ceiling and seeing your face. We spent only a short time together, Preach, so I, I can't understand why it should affect me so. But it does. With you, I saw myself. You were a mirror that showed me what I am. And it scared me. If only we had met somewhere else, say back in Pennsylvania, we would have gone for walks in the woods in the fall. You'd like that. We wouldn't care what day or year it was, but we'd know we belonged. That's how it might have been, Preach. Did you ever know that some people go around wishing they were dead? Call it a death wish. John. People don't live forever. I might be dead tomorrow. 
Johnny, it's not up to you to decide. I've never said this to anyone before, but I think I love you. Nothing seems important without you. I want so much for you to like me a little, to remember me. like that put you right up on top of the heap you know what I mean I might not be around to see it I might not live that long second you, you look like that horrible painting. And so, with an actor's dramatics, John Dennis comes to a crossroads in life. Knowing that of man's inner conflicts, the greatest struggle is with reality. Understanding this, he can find himself and the beginning of life. Thank you. 